Hey, this is your friend the RF, and you're supposed to record an intro in these silly videos, and I forgot to do it, so I've got my Lucky Charm shirt on, and I'm trucking around in the garage. This video is about the quartering two shot, which seems to be taken on a very high percentage of the situations, especially when you're swinging out of a tree and doing public stuff. The hunting public guys were kind enough to let me use footage and they sent me some footage of quartering two shots where they either had great success or had trouble. Most of the time, it was a long day, longer than needed. An exit in the guts or back or poor blood trails. And we're gonna go through that. And um, yes, the ranch ferry is going to advocate shooting forward um, because the physiology doesn't change just because the animals quartering two the heart and the lungs still stay the same, and you gotta shoot for the exit backwards from a quartering away shot, which means you're gonna have to shoot an adult arrow with an adult broadhead. They can do that kind of work. Hey, send hate mail to TroyAtRanchFair.com, but stay tuned. Ha <laughs> ha, massive amounts of logic, some sarcasm, and some other random stuff. Remember, you can either pass, you can pound them in the shoulder, or you can pray that you hit them back and they die. Stay tuned. Okay, this is the first video I ever saw the hunting public when I found out about the hunting public a couple of years ago. This is the first shot I ever saw them take. They are hunting on the side of a road. Y'all can go look at the video. They're probably all of y'all have seen it. If y'all haven't heard of the hunting public, you've been living under a rock like Patrick and that's okay, but you need to watch the hunting public. Aaron shoots this deer. We're gonna go to the clip now. Them. See how his hips are back? That's a quartering two shot. Now Aaron does a great job here shooting this deer right in the right in the vital V. I put a timer up, so let's watch this real quick. He's gonna he's gonna die right there, Ted. An act hit. He's in cardiogenic shock, so he's had his uh, cardio cardiovascular system severed and you'll see him blow blood out of his nose right up here. He's done. I mean, this deer is not going anywhere. Here it is in slow motion again. Watch this deer jump away. It's not too bad. Whack. I put him in, I stopped it. So there's the shot, and that's where you need to hit him if you're gonna shoot a quartering two shot. What we see there is an aiming point that's forward in the vital V and that's the shot that has to be taken. Hang on at the end of the video, I'm gonna go through some demonstrations of where the organs are placed and stuff, but we've got a couple of more clips to look at. So hang on. This is Aaron again. I've got the guys kind of in order. He's hunting over a decoy and this deer's running, walking right toward him. I texted Aaron about this and I said, hey man, give me the details on the recovery, the distance and all that stuff and what really happened, what did you hit?
So as you see, he made the normal assumption that that shot was, it's a little behind the crease, it's quartering in. He was thinking, mm, and he's seen a lot of deer shot on video, hundreds of them. Uh, he was thinking, you know, one long liver, it's gonna take a while, let him lay for six hours, the deer went 200 yards. It turned out to be a center mass impact long and through the rear. Again, this is a crazy shot. The quartering two shot is very, very crazy because so many different things happen. In reality, Aaron and the team did the right thing. They assumed it was gonna be one long liver and take a while, bad blood trail, et cetera. I'm gonna slow this thing down and you'll see that the deer never really stops moving. And he shoots and the deer's just kind of on the move. It kind of pauses there, but it's not a big stop. So what I did was I stopped it at impact. You can see there's the hole, that arrow's through him right there. And it looks okay. The leg is back, which cheats you in your mind and makes you think that it is a better hit than it is. It turned out to be a double lung, right? Just hang in there. You know, not every one of them is the same, but I thought it was a good judgment call on their part. Again, this is the same guy <laughs> in the previous video who shot the deer five, four or five inches forward of that. But it's hunting, it's stress, everybody's human. Every situation is different. So don't get too hard on my buddy Aaron Warbritton because unless you're not human and then you're a cyborg or something, that's fine. The next clip is Jake. I got two back-to-backs with Jake. And when I met the guys at the ranch, when they come down pig hunting with me this year, um, we discussed this and they said, well, we always thought you kind of shoot, you know, off the shoulder behind the crease. And Jake does a great job. He shoots these two next two deer. He shoots in the same spot. The first one is with a rage. And this shot is tight. Here, Logan. Nice buck. Nice buck. Nice buck. baby shooter. Oh, yeah. That's that goofy one. You want him? Yeah. Want him? Here's the rage. Like a lot of hunters, he's going to shoot behind the crease. And he does. He didn't miss. <laughs> he was Watch aiming him. there. He might fall right there. So then I texted Jake and said, hey, tell me about these two deer. And here's his notes. There's a couple of typos and misspellings in there. Calm down, you know. So again, you see the unpredictability. Um, that's a mechanical, fully deployed, and did fine, passed through, hit the dirt. Everything you, you know, I preach is shoot through them, hit the ground, don't let them bonk. Got it. Everything happened well there. The shot was back. Eight hours to find that deer. That's not a, that's not a mechanical problem. Again, hang on, physiology issue. Um, it just goes to show that this shot is crazy. And taking, a, you know, an adult arrow system, being able to bring that shot forward would be more like Aaron's first hit at least for a higher percentage of the time. Here's a second deer, he climbs up a tree. <laughs> Cameraman's on the ground. This one's awesome because uh, it's like little kids. <laughs> they just climb up a tree and shoot a deer because no reason to get too you know, crazy about this stuff. You're just trying to kill a deer. You like get all the stuff, so let's watch this clip unfold. Again, this deer's not terribly far. The hunting public do, right. guys do a great job right. of getting close. That is with the Maasai. So this is when he's converted to single bevel, but he shot that deer in almost exactly the same spot. So here's his notes. He had upgraded to, I think that's a 200 gram Maasai, it doesn't matter. It's a single bevel, ready to roll, upgraded his arrow system, shot the deer in the same spot. Again, this is just the misconception of where you shoot a deer on a quartering two shot, trying to avoid the shoulder. And um, here's Jake's notes on what it took to find that deer. So you can see <laughs> we had a mechanical and the best broadheads on earth for penetrating anything. 
at least for the only study on the planet that ever studied arrow penetration in the single bevel. Results are basically the same. This deer was tomorrow. The other deer they found in eight hours. Still a tremendous amount of time. And that is because of the physiology. Hang on, I keep saying that. Hang on. And then here's the next setup. This is this year. And Greg's shooting a deer. He's shooting the uh, Iron Wheel Solid four blade. Arrow weighs 600 grains. And this deer's coming at him, walking up. It's nice and tight. Goes through the deer, quartering in, and the deer runs off. Let's let this unfold. Right. Found the arrow. Yeah, it's not good. Not good at all. If you watch the shot and you're thinking, what the heck was that? I'm thinking the same thing. We watched it back on the camera and then on our phones. And because of the leaves in the way, because of the shadows, first we thought it was tighter to the shoulder and a better shot. Then I got up here and found the arrow and there's stomach matter on it. I apologize for that. That is just, that's the worst feeling right there. It's 10.30 right now. I'm just going to have to give it time. Hit the circle of that way and be safe. right here. The box right here. Yeah, he's dead. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I wish I'd have made a better shot. I feel terrible about that. I'm just I'm, really glad he was in the shade. Yep. Like yeah, it was, it's cool down here. It is. Kind of bizarre the way we thought, you know, looking back in the camera, that it was the shot would have been like way low and back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we got back to the campground and looked at the computer and it's like, Oh, well, holy cow, it's not, not, that, not bad. that bad. And it really, I mean, it's two and a half, three inches yeah. back from the shoulder and height is about right. Yeah. But apparently he was slightly quartering towards. Yeah, the I, shots I exactly, that. are pretty much exactly where you'd want it to be if he was perfectly broadside. But I mean, I mean, it's happened to me in the past too. The yeah. I mean, we've, yeah. had, we've had several hits really similar to this where it's like, must have just slightly been quartered. So, hey, I want to thank the hunting public guys for allowing this crazy man to uh, use their footage and show an example of a shot that's taken with crazy frequency and possibly give you all some guidance on what to do. If you hit one where these guys hit them on the four examples, they did a great job of looking at the video, giving them time, tracking slowly, getting some people out there to grid search and finding their animals. So if you hit one kind of wonky, if you're a human, you throw one back. I, <laughs> the advice is great. If you shoot them forward, and that's what we're gonna discuss in the next video. So there'll be a second video behind this. Be this is the land of the monoliths, the single bevel, one piece, super sharp, excellent steel broadheads. These two are tough head evolution broadheads. They are prototypes. They're a little beat up because I've been pounding them through all kind of stuff and I have not been able to break one. Haven't gotten a pig down with one yet, but I've been shooting some stuff and testing them. Shot them out to 60. They fly like a dart. These are 200 grains. You'll see those in 2021. And then you've seen, if you haven't, you haven't ever seen the tough head or pictures of it. That's a classic three to one, long, tapered, high structural integrity and very solid broadheads that can handle this kind of work. In the second video, 
I will have some physiology going on there and I'll have some examples of how the arrow, as the, as the animal quarters to you, what happens as you go through it and what it hits. So that'll be a good thing to watch. So stay tuned for that. Thanks again to the hunting public guys for letting me use their footage. It was really, really generous of you guys. I appreciate it. You guys are doing a great service for our sport, spreading the word and all the public stuff. It's fantastic. Hey, and don't forget to donate to the Ashby Bow Hunting Foundation. The Ashby Bow Hunting Foundation is formed in the last couple of years. I'm a board member and we are can going to continue Dr. Ed's research. We are not going to take any money from the industry. It's going to be all donation based, 501c3. We're going to follow Dr. Ashby's methodology, strategy, and tracking, and how he collected all of his data points. So donate to the Ashby Bowhunting Foundation. Help us out so we can continue studying the most lethal arrow systems on Earth in a scientific way that's going to be traceable, trackable, and give it away to the public free. Subscribe to the Ranch Ferry, hit that like button, that bell down there, I don't even know what that's about. If you wanna shoot adult arrows t-shirt, look below this video, there's a little banner that goes across there, click on one of those and get one of those. Ranch 